Welcome traders to the Ticknell Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 30th of January with me Patrick Mumbley. This week is really packed with central bank meetings and markets expect the Federal Reserve to raise rates by 25 basis points given inflation is moving in the right direction. The European Central Bank a rate hike of 50 basis points looks like a done deal and the Bank of England is likely to follow in the ECB's footsteps given that wage growth is persistently high. So, in the US, two major events will shape market sentiment for the week ahead. First, obviously, is the Federal Reserve Policy Meeting. Markets expect the FOMC to raise the policy rate by 25 basis points, having raised by 75 basis points on four consecutive occasions last year, <clears throat> and that lifted the policy rate by 50 basis points in December. This marks a clear slowdown in the pace of tightening and appears justified given inflation is moving in the right direction and activity is starting to slow. However, the Fed remains wary and will again suggest that it is not uh, the end of the interest rate increases. The Central Bank will also be keen to dismiss the notion that it's preparing for potential rate cuts later this year. Financial con conditions have loosened given movements in the dollar, treasury yields and credit spreads. And it may feel that any further loosening, fueled by the talk of potential policy easing in the second half of the year, could undermine its current actions in fighting inflation. <clears throat> and then rounding out uh, data-intensive week in the US is going to be the January jobs report on Friday. Employment creation remains strong for now, but job layoff announcements are coming thick and fast. Markets are nervously watching what happens to the temporary help component, which has already experienced five consecutive months of falls. Given the nature of the role, which is easier to be hired into and fired from, this tends to lead to broader shifts in employment. As such, markets expect to see a soft and non-farm payrolls increase um, and in recent months, but it is still likely to be well above the 100k level given the large number of job vacancies. <clears throat> Other data in the US this week, um, Monday, we get the January Dallas Fed Index, uh, looking for conditions to remain soft across the regions. And uh, on Tuesday, January Consumer Confidence, last time out 108.3, uptrending confidence limited by rates and real income squeeze. And also uh, on Wednesday, we get manufacturing uh, PMI, 46.8% 46.8 last time out. Uh, manufacturing activity remains in a fragile state with S&P and ISM broadly mirroring each other on that uh, reading. So in terms of the technical setup for the dollar index as we head into this pivotal week with the central bank meeting and the jobs report, I'm looking for the dollar to break down to a new low to test the projected trend line support coming in just above 150 level. From there, as long as we maintain this <coughs> bullish momentum divergence, I'm watching for bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side, looking for a three-way corrective move back in to test just below the 103 level. At this stage, <coughs> any close below the 100 level would be a significant bearish development opening the move down to test the support, the next support area down to the 9930s. In the Eurozone, obviously, we have the ECB out on Thursday. As I say, the central, when the central bank meets, all eyes and ears will once again be on the communication aspect in the form of the press conference. The rate hike of 50 basis points Points looks like a done deal, but how far and how fast the ECB will go from there is still unclear. Markets expect hawkish comments by ECB President Christine Lagarde in order to prevent another drop in market interest rates. Uh, current market expectations about ECB rate cuts in 2024 uh, would seem somewhat premature at this stage. In terms of other data, on Monday, we will get consumer confidence and economic confidence in the Eurozone. Falling gas prices should provide some support to overall economic sentiment. And on Tuesday, Q4 GDP, 0.3%. Economic resilience is likely to be tested in the coming months. On Wednesday, January CPI, 
9.2% last time out. Falling energy prices leading the decline in headline inflation within the Eurozone. We'll also get December unemployment rate, 6.5% last time. Slack is starting to emerge slowly uh, over the coming months in terms of the employment rate in, uh, in the Eurozone. And obviously the ECB meeting uh, rounds out the data there on Thursday. From a technical perspective, the euro dollar <coughs> looking for one more extension to the upside. So move back through resistance 10930s to test into the ascending trend channel resistance coming in at 10960s. As long as we maintain momentum divergence there, I look for bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side. Looking to play a corrective move back into test support once again into this 10820, 10830. And from there, we watch for bullish reversal patterns to re-engage on the long side. Next upside objective is going to be a test of 110. <clears throat> so moving to the UK, as I say, the Bank of England are up this week as well in terms of uh, basis point increases. We're looking for a 50 basis point move. Uh, the bank looks more likely to follow the lead of the European Central Bank than the Federal Reserve on Thursday. And we are looking at a 50 basis point hike for the second consecutive meeting. While the minutes of the December meeting appear to open the door to a potential downshift to a 25 basis point move this month, the reality is that the recent data has looked relatively hawkish. Wage growth is still persistently high, both in the official numbers and the BOE's own business survey. Headline inflation came in a little lower than the bank had projected back in November, but services CPI, seen as a better gauge of domestically driven inflation, has come in above expectations. If we do get this 50 basis point hike on Thursday, then it's likely to be the last. BOE officials have suggested that much of the impact of last year's rate hikes is still to show through, and cracks are forming in interest rate sensitive parts of the economy. Expect one final 25 basis point move in March, taking the bank to a peak terminal rate at 4.25%. Key question for Thursday is whether the bank itself acknowledges its work is nearly complete. Uh, I suspect it's more likely to keep its options open than close the door at this stage. In terms of other data in the UK, mortgage lending out on Tuesday. We can, uh, and we are looking to see gradual easing as how, as the housing correction really starts to take uh, pace in the UK. So looking for a 4.4 billion print there. And so uh, with the policy rate on Thursday, that rounds out the income data in terms of, uh, in terms of the UK. Moving to the charts, uh, sterling is consolidating below these prior highs at the 124.40s, being in a triangle pattern here. So I'm looking for any move back into test the support 12340s, which are bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side. Next upside objective being a 125 test. At this stage, it would take a close back through 12320 to suggest a retest of support back into the 12260s. Dollar yen, <coughs> taking a look at the econ data for the week in Japan, and it is a very scant slate there so really all we've got on tuesday is december industrial production global demand risk still at play there so 0.2 percent last time out looking for something in that region and that is the only data of note for japan from a technical perspective dollar yen still trading within this descending trend channel so i'm looking for any pop into the just below the 131 level watch for bearish reversal patterns there to engage on the short side and then we'll be looking for Price to break down through the corrective channel here. So back down through 12870s on route to retest price cycle lows, 12720s. And then from there, obviously looking to move down to test 125 as the next pivotal support level. At this stage, we will take a close back through the trend channel resistance, so through 13150s to put in a test of 13280s on the upside. We'll be down under to Australia. In terms of data next week, what do we have? On Tuesday, we get retail sales uh, looking for some weakness uh, to start to develop there, coming off very strong prints in November. So looking for a 0.4% print for uh, retail sales. Then on Wednesday, <coughs> CoreLogic Home Value Index, broad-based correction, 
still firmly entrenched in terms of the housing market in Australia, looking for a negative 0.12% print there. And on Thursday, we get dwelling approvals, uh, showing a clear downtrend in response to rate rises that have been seen in Australia, and so looking for a 1.3% print there. We round out the week down under with housing finance, looking for negative 3% print there, down 24% from uh, January peaks, but still above the pre-COVID levels. Both turnover and average prices still moving lower uh, for the, uh, the Australian housing markets. From a technical perspective, the Aussie dollar remains robust at this stage, and we are targeting this weekly trend channel resistance 73.50s. What I'm looking for here is any move into 71.80s, just over that 72 level. Watch for three-way corrective move back into test. Sending trend channel support. So something in the 70 30 areas from there. I want to watch a bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side. Next upside objective is going to be a move up into the 72 60s ahead of that 73 50s. And last but not least, let's just take a quick sentiment check in terms of our weekly, our weekend risk barometer. Bitcoin continues to consolidate above the 23,000 level. As it does, I'm looking for a breakthrough. The 23,800 to target a move up to 25,000, which coincides. So 26,600 is the yearly pivot. So that's the 25,000, 26,000 are the next key levels on the upside for Bitcoin. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 30th of January. As always, traders plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.